The next thing you need to know about for atmospheric science is convection. So convection occurs in different substances like water. So water in the ocean, water in other places, um, magma, so with plate tectonics, it also occurs in the air. So right now with atmospheric notes, we're gonna be most concerned about the air. So here is the process of convection. So what happens is this, and here's where your colors will be helpful. If you have a red and blue, or even orange is fine. All right, so what happens here is if we're talking about um, air, so if we have air currents, we can draw the ground here. So as the sun is overhead and it heats up, so we have the sun over here, and it's going to heat up the air, warm air rises. So the, the sun is going to heat up the ground and a lot of that radiant heat is going to um, get hot and some of that heat's going to bounce back um, with albedo. And so the warm air rises, but as it rises, it cools off in the upper atmosphere. Then that cooler air diverts to the side and starts to fall. But as it's falling, it warms up as it gets closer to the ground. And that warm air diverts to the side and goes around again. Now, once it cools, colder air can't hold as much water in it. So once it cools in the upper atmosphere, it's going to condense into clouds. And those clouds can't hold as much moisture, so you often end up with a lot of rain. Before the cool, dry air moves and falls. cool, dry air falls. This is warm, moist air rises. And again, we have rain there. So this is the process of convection currents in uh, the atmosphere, so with air. Now, sometimes they're called convection currents. Sometimes they're called convection cells. So over here on this diagram, they're called convection cells. So this process happens. Let's see, here's our equator. Here's zero degrees. And at zero degrees, the equator, you may know, is very wet. It's where your tropical rainforests are. So this warm, wet air rises, and then it rains right directly back. See here, remember, in this convection cell, as it rises, it's going to rain where it rose. Then it's going to move. So this cell then moves 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south latitude, so both north and south, and it's going to fall as dry air. So this is dry at 30 degrees north. So most of your deserts and dry climates on the earth are at 30 degrees, about 30 degrees north latitude and about 30 degrees south latitude. Not all of them, but most of them. So Santa Clarita, we're at 34 degrees north latitude and we are Chaparral, which is a very dry climate. The same process then happens up here. So this is 60 degrees north and it's wet. So think of Seattle area, which is over here, but it's pretty close up here. 
And then this is down here, 60 degrees south latitude, and it's wet. Not 6-O-S, it's 60 degrees. I'll put a little degree so you don't get confused. 60 degrees south latitude, and it's wet. And then you get to the poles. So at the very north pole, it's zero degrees north, and it's very dry. Because take a look at this convection cell. You'll notice it's wet and then it's going to rain here and the dry air is going to fall. So this is why the tundra is considered um, kind of like a frozen desert. It's not a desert, it's its own biome, but it's very little rain at the tundra. So this would be zero degrees south and it's also very dry. Remember it's the tundra up here or down here and um, Remember, it's the tundra up here. So we also need to know the names of these cells. So the two cells that surround the equator are named Hadley cells. So that's one, and this occurs all over the globe. So it's gonna occur it only shows it on this side of the globe, but it's all over the globe, okay? So between zero and 30 degrees north and zero and 30 degrees south, we have Hadley cells. Then the next ones are called feral cells. These were named after the people who discovered them, Mr. Hadley, Mr. Feral. Down here, you also have a feral cell. So the cells that are between 30 and 60 latitude are called feral cells. And then this one's easy. This is a polar cell. And then down here, same thing, a polar cell. So it's a little confusing. It's a lot of writing. All right, so let's talk about convection again. So we have warm. So this is really the definition of convection warm sorry this is moist air it's a little together this is warm comma moist air um, rises then it cools in upper atmosphere and when it cools it drops its moisture because cooler air can't hold as much moisture. And we say it diverges. So diverges means to break apart. So you can see like here at the equator, it rises, it rains. So we can put this rain clouds all in here. So we got rain clouds, we have rain. And then it diverges, so it goes north and some of it goes south. So that's what we mean by diverges, period. Okay, and then cool dry air falls on a different latitude. Okay, and so this is why, again, most deserts are found at around, not exactly, um, but around 30 degrees north and south latitude. Okay, and that's the reason why. My writing's a little messy, I apologize. So now that we know about convection, and again, you can pause the video to give yourself time to catch up on the writing. So now that we know that we have this process of convection, it is diverted, the rising and falling air is diverted because the earth spins. And this is what creates winds. So what the Coriolis effect is, the definition of the Coriolis effect is the spin of the earth on its axis.
and it diverts substances to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so convection, this is important to know for exams. What creates winds? Convection cells and the Coriolis effect equal winds. Okay, so it's the diverting of the air to the right in the northern hemisphere and the left in the southern hemisphere, and I abbreviated hemisphere here, is what um, the Coriolis effect is, and it's the air that rose and fell that is being diverted to create winds. So when you're looking at this diagram, it's kind of weird and you're like, well, aren't they both going to the right? It depends on the angle of how you view it. So if you are viewing it from straight on, or if you are viewing it from top down. Um, and so that's why the, the, the view of the earth makes more sense than just looking at this one straight on in that way. <clears throat> it also depends on where that um, wind started and that air started um, to how it's diverted. So here, if you are looking down from the North Pole, the air is being diverted counterclockwise. But if you're looking up from the North Pole, from the South Pole, it's being diverted counterclockwise. So clockwise, counterclockwise. So again, it's the perspective of how you're looking at the earth that makes the difference um, for diverting. So if you're looking from the North Pole, if you're looking straight on from the equator. All right. Going on to the next one. So let's talk about the layers of our atmosphere. So if this is the ground right here, oh, let's actually do this on the next video.